Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele on the Ground podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I am your pod master for the day. <laughs> pod man. Pod man. <laughs> pod man number one. Pod man number two, we have Aaron the Voice Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron? What's up? And pod man number three, we have Mr. Kahai, the legend. For again, say what's up, Kahai. What's up? The boys are here. We're going to be talking to Ukulele today. Um, how we do things here is uh, you, you got questions, we got answers. I, I think it's a great slogan, right? We should keep that. You got questions, we got answers. Or is that something else already, Kahai? Uh, I have no idea. I think that's Radio Shack <laughs> or something. <laughs> but whatever, <laughs> you know. They don't mind, right? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, are they all gone? Uh, no, they're, dude, there's a Radio Shack right now at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll just take your word for it I haven't yeah, been to the mall yeah. i don't i mean i don't think they listen to our podcast but someone someone's gonna talk someone's gonna squeal you know like we don't know who's gonna squeal to the radio shack we're like you know they've been using your catchphrase i don't even know if that's their catchphrase <laughs> <laughs> this is this show is not fact checked yeah yeah no 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 and please don't <laughs> please don't we you know, our, our fragile little egos can't handle it. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to the Ukulele Girl podcast where we talk ukulele. Um, yeah, just ask us any kind of ukulele questions and we'll try to come up with the best answer possible. I'll come up with the best answer. These two guys will put in their two cents and we'll come up with a uh, six cent answer just for you. All right. Um, we get questions via email, via chat, via phone call, via text, via voicemail. Um, so however we get them. We try to answer them as best as we can. If not, then we just kind of talk with Kulele. This is, you know, we, we do kind of a uke talk, all right? So first off, Kahai, tell us the first question. I think uh, Aaron got a question from, Ooh. I don't know, yeah. Oh, it was from Heart Ukulele. So okay. she was the one that asked about their, uh, she had a couple of questions. One of them was that uh, last week's uh, cliffhanger Oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Right, about right. the neck. She had mm-hmm. like a ding on the neck yeah, or some kind yeah. of some kind of depression on the neck right right and so mm-hmm. she i guess she was able to get it uh send it back oh nice and they good, sent a good. replacement for her and she said that it's um she had another question mm-hmm. that was uh she said discuss uh if you could discuss tips and advice on how to set up collaboration projects for success Ooh. what things like for example what things to keep in mind when working with other musicians mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, especially like if you're collaborating online like mm. virtually that's cool that's a yeah. great question um you know uh, how about we do it this way we uh i'll tell you how we collaborate with people and then uh, we'll kind of give some advice based on how you know how we do things um but Typically, the way that, you know, that I collaborate with other people, I just, I mean, I collaborate with mostly people that I, you know, that I know. So I kind of know their styles. I kind of know, like, what they bring to the table and things like that. And I kind of know where my place is as far as, uh, you know, a uh, co-collaborator with them. So, uh, for example, as far as, uh, you know, a uh, co-collaborator with them. So, uh, for example, the last collaboration um, song that we did, Leave the Door Open, we collaborated with, uh, with, with these two dudes, um, Alfred and um and aaron so aaron you know is uh is the lead singer of um or i guess one of the those those two guys are lead singers right alfred and uh, yeah and aaron right yeah, yeah. both of them are the lead singers of a um of a band in san diego uh called crown roots they're called because <laughs> yeah, yeah, before they, they used to be called uh, almost islanders yeah but now they're called crown roots or I, I don't know if they're still active but you know i've um I've jammed with them. I know them very well. I know their, you know, I, I know what they bring to the table, which is amazing vocals. You know, like they're they're great at singing. So I I knew to stay in my lane and be like, okay, uh, just do whatever, you know, like do whatever vocals you want to do, and just let me know if you need anything else. But please don't, <laughs> like, <laughs> please just do as much vocals as possible because I, you know, like I'm not in that league. You know what I mean? Like they are really good at uh, at, at singing, and um. So, you know, just kind of knowing what, uh, what you're, um, who you're collaborating with and what kind of style they do, what kind of, you know, uh, what they specialize in and just kind of let people shine where they should, you know, where they should shine. So anyway, um, knowing that, so what I did was I, you know, I, I called up Aaron and I'm like, Hey, um, 
you know, there's this song that I kind of want to do for uh, for the next lesson is that that Bruno Mars song is like, oh, great. I know that song already. So I'm like, OK, cool. So what I did was um, I, I told Aaron that, hey, I'll uh, I'll record the, um, the the music, the music part, you know, like I'll I'll put a I'll put an ukulele track down and um, and, and I'll make it kind of just exactly like the uh, like the Silk Sonic track. And he's like, great, I'll send it over. Uh, I told him I'll send it over to you. Just uh, just sing on it, put whatever it is that you want to put, you know, like harmonies, whatever. Just do your thing. Yeah. Send it back to me. I will, uh, you know, I will put more like more music on it based on what you send me. I'll just kind of play around with it. Um, and then he mentioned that Alfred plays bass and uh, and Alfred can put bass on it. I'm like, great, because I'm not a great bass player. So awesome that he can do the bass. Um, and then. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. So, so he sends, you know, he sends back this uh, this amazing vocal track on top of what's called the scratch track, which is um, a a scratch ukulele track that I made. What that means is, I, you know, I it's just a placeholder that I'm giving him so that he can sing on top of that placeholder. When he gives it back to me, I'll play the real ukulele part, you know, um, on top of that placeholder. It's just so that he has something to sing to. Really, is what it is. Yeah, you know, is what a scratch track is, right? The the correct tempo. Yeah, and yeah. Chords, tempo, chords. all that stuff, right? Yeah. And then now, when I get it back, I can really clean up those, you know, those ukulele parts. And uh, but it's just for the sake of putting it out there and having him something to, you know, something to sing to. Okay. Um, and then once, you know, like uh, once I got it, uh, once I got the, the, the ukulele parts, um, I contacted my friend Mark Baldonado. He, we've had him here on the show before. Uh, Mark, um, you know, sequenced some drums and, um, and when he sequenced the drums, he gave it back to me. I sequenced the guitar and like and made sure to mix everything down. Um, I gave it to I gave it to Aaron and Kahai for a little bit of extra you know um, extra layer of protection, I should say. You know what I mean? Like the more ears that listen to it, the better. And then uh, Kahai, you know, like cleaned up a little bit of drum parts. Then Aaron cleaned up a little bit of the drum parts as well. Just the whole track in general. And uh, and what you hear now is like the final product. Okay, and that's how you know that's how usually we collaborate with people. Um, that's not necessarily a special, you know, um, a special case because that's kind of how we normally do it. Who's who, who else did we collaborate with? Um, like, oh, like virtual or like overseas collaboration recently. Who's, who's another recent? <laughs> recently, yeah, uh, I was gonna say because we did, uh, we actually did a collaboration with, um, Crown Roots, right? Like their whole band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was the ago. second time. That was the second video that they were they've been featured. So a long time ago, they did um, "Your Dreaming" yeah. by um, the is yeah. that the Green. Yeah, the, 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 uh, I think so. No, catch a is it either catch a fire <laughs> or I think it's catch a fire. Yeah. Hey, whatever. Anyway, I get confused with those two too. <laughs> yeah, it's the same band. <laughs> No, 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 one's from New Zealand, one's from, no, not from New Zealand. Um, so, yeah. The last one, I think, was Trina. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Trina. Trina okay. or Ola. Ola. So, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys the lowdown on both those, you know. This is kind of cool because, like, nobody really peeks behind the curtain of, of how we do things. So, with Ola, um, that was the Get Up Stand Up, you know, like, uh, that, that we did back in November or for November. Um, he's, he's another guy that, that I knew. I knew him all the way back in high school and I've always wanted to collaborate with him because I'm like, I look up to that guy. You know what I mean? Like in, in high school, he already had a band and then their band became like the biggest band on our island. You know, I know that doesn't seem like it's, it's saying much, but they were really good. Like they've, um, they've played backup for, you know, for amazing bands such as Ziggy Marley, you know, like that name might ring a bell. <laughs> like, you know, they've, uh, they've not only like, you know, jammed with him, but like they've been his backup band, like uh, here on Kauai when, when when Ziggy was you know was was here doing shows. So they're that good. So in order, you know, for me to collaborate with one of like um, one of my childhood inspirations, like to play music, because he's a new ukulele player originally, but then he started playing uh, guitar. So you know, uh, I kind of knew his style. I knew what he brought to the table, and I I knew that that was the perfect song for him. And I knew that like when whenever he played out, he would uh, he would do all these awesome loops and things like that. You know, so I'm like, hey, so I called him up. I'm like, Ola, can you um, do you want to collaborate on this song? He's like, yeah. So it's like, hey, you know that thing that you do with the loops and stuff? Just film yourself doing that. Send it to us, and then I'll you know like uh, I'll add like some ukulele parts because he basically does you know all of it like he does the yeah. guitar he does the vocals he does like the harmonies and stuff he has and like little yeah you know, little percussion things with his guitar 
same thing. Like the whole staying in my own lane, I'm like, if he's really good at that, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna add ukulele to it because I guess that's the only lane that I occupy in that song, you know? So when, uh, you know, when, when he did his, uh, he did his video, I guess we, um, we extracted the, um, the, the audio from uh, based on his video, then we did it that way instead of um, you know doing it professionally through like a DAW. In this case, I use Pro Tools. Um, but with uh, with Ola, he we just we just did it with um, you know with, with whatever audio that he sent us with his video, and then I played over it. Aaron uh, you know took it and like he put it together, made it an awesome little video, and that's how we collaborated with that with Trina. Um, I made the track first because I knew, you know, she played ukulele and whatever, but once again, like staying in, you know, like people stay in their own lane. She knew that like I, you know, I could play the ukulele a lot more cleaner, like for, you know, for the track um, and a lot uh, as far as the tone of the ukulele goes. You know, she's not like a terrible ukulele player, but I feel that like when I play ukulele on the track, it's, you know, it's just the right tone, the right everything. Okay. So oh, everything that I want it to be anyway, you know, so uh I, I made a scratch track and I sent it over to Trina. Trina sang on it, did some harmonies and stuff, sent it back. Um, I made some notes. I was like, hey, can you do, you know, can you add this to the, you know, to the harmonies or can you sing this line again? Sent it over. Um, then she sends me a, you know, like the, uh, the redone track and then I just kind of replaced whatever needed to be replaced. And then I put it together, added some bass, added some whatever to it. And, um, and that's it. the final product is what, what you guys see. We, uh, Aaron and I filmed it at um, Marriott. I was like the beach, yeah, like at at the beach somewhere, and then um and then she filmed it at her you know at her place. Aaron cut it up together, and then that's there you go. So based on you know like how we how we do collaborations, I like to just kind of play it safe and collaborate with people that I kind of you know that I kind of know and I kind of know their style and things like that. But that's that's gonna be one of my you know my, one of my biggest advice is that I'm not saying that don't collaborate with people that you don't know, but at least know what the capabilities of that person that you're collaborating with and what they can do and what they can bring them to the table. If you're not sure if you are gonna collaborate with someone that you know that that is new or that you're unfamiliar with, you know, just talk, just talk and say like, hey, you know, um, uh, I'm gonna do this for the uh, for the video or for the for the track or whatever it may be. Um, what were you gonna do? And then they'll, you know, they'll say what they want to do and then like, okay, well, what about this part, this part, this part? You guys can kind of delegate who does what, you know? But careful planning is a, is a huge, huge, huge part of it before you even do anything. Just kind of like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Um, but uh, as far as uh, the audio goes, it is a lot cleaner, a lot more simple that if, if, you, uh, if you decide to do the audio first. Okay, and then like, cause video wise, you can just kind of like either lip sync it or, or, or uh, you know, or trace over what you did. But having that audio helps out, you know, helps out a lot because I'm guessing since you're asking an ukulele podcast, this is, it's going to be a musical collaboration. So if it's a musical, musical collaboration, um, the track needs to be really good because that that's, that's the music part and then the video, you know? Um, and then I, I mean you know just get everything you need put it together and, uh, and and make the video like that's now i'm gonna hand it over to aaron who does the video part of it but audio wise that's kind of how how i set it up now yeah so how yeah, do you basic, do basically video? as long as you have like the mm. tempo and yeah. where the chord changes are gonna yeah. be i think that that is like a necessity at the beginning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in order to put together a successful collaboration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that's the basis of everything, yeah. right? The is scratch it... track super duper important. Yeah. 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 So important. so with the scratch track, it's like it doesn't even have to be like final, like mm -hmm. the audio mm -hmm. quality is great. It just has to be like the correct tempo yes. that everybody's gonna lock into yeah. that tempo. And the correct chords. And then the correct chord yeah, changes geez. when when it when the changes happen. Mm -hmm. And then you can add everything else around that. Yeah. But um and, and it's important to have clean tracks too, right? Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. um if they're recording to the scratch track, uh have them 
put on earphones and then yeah just, so you don't get extra yeah uh, yeah and then just record the the sounds of their part mm. so you yeah put it together it's kind of yeah. like um I, I don't know if you guys ever use photoshop but it's just kind of like layers and you know in, in photoshop so that's like the the beginning layers of scratch track and you just like add stuff on top of it and you can always take out that scratch track later yeah so like when you're say you're like asking somebody but you're you might not be sure if they even know the song or anything mm -hmm. would you send like references to like you know the actual song or yeah. it'd be like yeah. is it okay to be like oh I, I like what you did here but here's like a video or something maybe can you try and make it like this or something mm -hmm. you know give mm -hmm. them is is that like kind of a uh, good practice to like give them ideas of like kind of your idea of where the collaboration yeah should go. and that's i mean collaboration i mean the the main word is to collaborate you know you're you're putting something to you know together like you're putting your your efforts you know together and coming out with something really special so you know knowing like knowing what you want it to sound like just communicate you know when you collaborate with someone you want to communicate about the final product and what you you know what what your vision is for the uh, for either the video or for just the track because you might just you know, I don't know what your when your end goal is, but maybe you just want a good track. You know, maybe you just want to collaborate uh, musically with somebody. But you kind of have to plan it out and make sure that both parties or three or four, however many people you're collaborating with, has an idea of um, of what the final product is going to be, or at least voice your you know your um, your your plans for it. What, what you're going to do, so they can kind of act accordingly. Like if uh, if you're if you're going to say like, oh, you know, I'm kind of gonna I'm going to do it this reggae style or whatever. You know, like they're not going to sing it Celine Dion style, or maybe I don't know. You know, <laughs> like I don't know what you guys want to do, but just communicate those things and um it, and it'll kind of give the other person a, an idea of what you're thinking, and then they'll tell you what they're thinking, and uh, and that's. That's when the collaboration magic happens, you know. <laughs> I mean, like uh, you were saying, right? That you sent Trina the like scratch track, mm -hmm. and she sent you like a take, and then you kind of like sent back like, "Oh, can you do it like this or yeah. like that?" Yeah. So like when you send notes, how uh, is there kind of like a way to do it where you know it's like, "Oh, can you, you asking for you know mm. them to try something, but not overstepping your bounds?" Where it's like. Right. Just telling them straight up, like, oh, do it like this. Or yeah, do it like that, you were right? off tune or whatever. It's just like those, you know, those things, like, um, you you kind of have to just, like, let them know. Like, and you got to be honest without, you know, w without kind of hurting anybody's feelings. But for the most part, I've been lucky enough that it hasn't been, like, you know, too, like that bad of, like, I don't know how to tell this person. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, been, it's been okay. And, like, and because we're, like, a small little ukulele, you know, like, play-along videos and stuff, and then we're not trying to, like, submit anything to the Grammys, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect. And, and that kind of makes it special sometimes to me. And that, like... Like everyone's personality is there, so if you know if uh, if they rush the tempo a little bit or if they sing you know a little bit flat or sharp or whatever, it's just all personality, I think, and it makes it more believable that it's just like normal people doing you know doing things. <laughs> yeah. We're not collaborating with like Bruno Mars or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like the maybe that would step Bruno up my Mar game. Yeah, it's like yeah. just dudes that want to sing you know a Bruno Mars song. So like no, you know it's it's the internet. So I, I'm not. You know, I'm not putting like auto tune or anything like that on on all of it, and 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 it it definitely shows. <laughs> you know, that I don't put auto tune on myself. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, and I think that's part of the charm. You know what I mean? Like, but if that's not your thing, you can always you know you can always kind of tell them that like, hey, uh, this line right here is a little bit flat. Can you you know like um, it sounds good, but yeah, just, yeah. it's just a, it's a little bit pitchy. So yeah. can you if like, you have time, can you yeah, redo? Yes. If you have time, yeah. give me like maybe five takes you know, or whatever. You uh -huh. know, like uh, five different takes of that of that one line or that one verse even just make the whole verse you know like if you can do the verse give me five of those and i'll pick the best one and then if they still can't do it just just, just use gotta, the best one and use go. the best one <laughs> yeah the best one yeah and that's you know that that happens it, it happens definitely um so just you know you know like just just as if you were to work with somebody like in person like that's kind of how you want to treat it you know you don't want to like hurt anyone's feelings or you don't want to be too much of a tyrant you know yeah. like i want it this way i want to do this part and you're going to do this it's like you got to let them have a voice in what the final product is going to be because that's what collaboration is and they're not yeah. just hired guns or whatever you know like if 
if you uh if they are if they're like studio musicians and you're just paying them to like you know to do a part then maybe you could be as honest as you want you know but if it's like friends coming together like how we do here on ukulele underground it's like yeah bring your energy and uh, we'll try to you know put something together you also mm-hmm. want to be like right I- i'm guessing if mm-hmm. that's what you're going for yeah like you want to be a good collaborator so like maybe in the future too th- you know they'll be like they'll remember like oh yeah it was pretty fun to work with that yeah, person yeah. or it was easy because i think it's mm-hmm. uh at least you know for us like we'd much rather work mm-hmm. with somebody who's easy to work with yeah. than somebody who's you know may, might be like mm-hmm. technically more <laughs> proficient but it's like oh it, it was so hard to <laughs> yeah. work with them it's so hard to get the tracks or whatever yeah it's like well i'd rather just have somebody who's mm-hmm. like you know maybe they don't sing everything perfectly but yeah when you ask them for something they're like yeah i can do that yeah sure thing you know mm-hmm. they're excited to work yeah. on something too and you just gotta go with the flow like <laughs> i'm laughing now because i want to tell uh, i want to tell you guys about one collaboration in particular was um what is that song uh, yeah yeah yeah. What is that? Sweet, home, like, Alabama. sweet home Alabama. One of my favorite collaborations. That I've ever done. <laughs> so we collaborated with um with the Baron and uh he's from like uh Sweden. Sweden? Or yeah, Sweden or Nor- no, one of those, you know. Yeah. Like, he's, he's from Europe. <laughs> uh and then we had Russ, you know, uh he's from San Francisco, really good friend of ours and hilarious guy. You know, like uh-huh. we we've, we've hung out with him and stuff and we know the energy that he brings to the table. Uh-huh. So I knew what I was getting into when I asked him, "Hey, you want to do Sweet Home Alabama because he's a he likes folk music, um, Neil Young in particular, and uh, you yeah, know, yeah. and those things. So I'm like, hey, but, you know, um, I think, <laughs> but yeah, Leonard Skinner was making fun <laughs> exactly. of Neil Young. <laughs> So he's like, dude, why don't we get the Baron? Like he at least, you know, like he's not American, like, you know, from, from the South or anything, but he, he has that he, raspy yeah, voice. Yeah, he has that raspy yeah. voice. He's got, you know, he's got the look, you know, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like the more the merrier, like, right. So Baron does an awesome job. Uh, Russ does an awesome job. So like I, you know, I, we, we put the, uh, the, the, the audio together. It's like, okay, cool. Uh, can I just get a video from you guys? That would be great. And then like, <laughs> So they sent it over to Aaron. I didn't see it. And then Aaron's like, oh, man, Russ's video. I was like, why? What, what happened? What happened to Russ's video? He's like, dude, <laughs> he's got it. I was like, okay, well, don't tell me that. I'll just be surprised because I always trust, with, you know, with, with my entire being, like Aaron's decision something. You know what I mean? Like even if, if something, it, you know, like uh, if I'm like, I don't know, I don't know about this. I'm like, no, Aaron knows best. Like, so. I watched it and I'm like, yes, that was the best decision because <laughs> if you guys watch that video, he, he has parts that he should be singing. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, how, how do I explain this? Like, uh, but he just stares at the camera. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's in, like in the he, best way possible. He recorded the video. <laughs> yeah, the as, audio. Yeah, as a no, no, no. He he was recording the video mm-hmm. part as if he was gonna lip sync his <laughs> part, but he doesn't. <laughs> so and, and it's a it's a certain type of humor. <laughs> doesn't make sense to everyone <laughs> we chose to let it keep it in there because we because, know russ's yeah, humor that was the energy that he brought and we're just like that's awesome you know like you just go with the flow and that's why like if we were trying to be like professionals or whatever and like super uptight about it, or like russ we can't put this out there like we can't we just we can't this is hilarious but we can't put it out there we're like we're like a we're like a company <laughs> like we're like a business i guess you know but no we're like you know what this is it's perfect and so i like i said i trusted Aaron. i didn't see it until the video came out uh-huh. you know i so whatever the first of the, that month that that song came out i'm like all right here we go like aaron said there was something that russ did that i have to watch <laughs> and i just couldn't stop cracking up like just i'm smiling thinking about it like yeah watch that video it's hilarious um and that's what i mean like just let you know let the uh like whatever energy that each person brings to the you know to the table and if it's too much you know if that's too much for you let them know like um but you kind of have to know who you know who you're collaborating with and in that sense we knew exactly what like russ was uh, was about and that's what he gave us we're like no we'll, we'll keep it it's, it's yeah. awesome you know and and i guess it depends on what side you're on because uh, usually it's assumed that the person who's going to edit the audio yeah and or the video mm-hmm 
has the vision for what it's going to yes, be that's like. True. Yeah, that's and true. so they're going to they're going to try and dictate what mm-hmm. they think that mm-hmm. they you know what they want from you or f- mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so so it depends if you're the one yeah. that's putting the video together yeah. or editing the audio or the video mm-hmm. then you have a little bit more say in like what it looks like yeah, yeah, in yeah. what they what you mm-hmm. want from the mm-hmm. other collaborators yes. if you're not that person yeah. then try to be as you know cooperative with that person as possible yeah like um like i like i mentioned you know i wholeheartedly like always trust aaron and like there have been many times where aaron's like oh can you ask that person for this part or can yeah. you ask that person to do this instead yeah. or to whatever or i tell you a lot yeah like, yeah you tell it to me and then this i tell part. yeah yeah like, yeah ex- that yeah that too for, for yeah for your uh, part because uh, i was gonna say like say with trina and stuff you know you watch the uh the original celine dion video it's like okay well she kind of does it in this white you know like this white background or whatever so can you tell trina like to yeah. film her video kind of like this because you know aaron has like the uh the the direction that that you know that the video is going to go to so i'm like okay cool so i I told trina and she did exactly that you know but yeah aaron tells me all the time to make you know to make the edits that that needs to be done you know like for me because it's just one set of ears that is listening to it or or one set of eyes that is that that is seeing it so running it through aaron at least gets that second set of ears you know so something i like i i remember even is like the arthur play along right yeah yeah yeah. like so we only had joey for that day right yeah he no redos (laughs) yeah he was like flying out yeah but then i remember like aaron didn't aaron ask you like oh can you like kind of fill out the sound a little bit more Mm. yeah i redid the the guitar yeah Yeah. it sounds a little empty with with Mm. just you and joy right Mm -hmm. so it's like stuff like that added in a little bit more yeah where Mm -hmm. where it's like yeah, like I, I can put this out, but I can hear that there's like mm. potential for it to be like better if mm. I add this or this, mm. right? Yeah. Or if I ask for this or this. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So, like love collaborating with people. Um and you know, not, not that I'm super choosy with uh, with who I collaborate with, but it's usually people I know or if I've like jammed with. It's because that just allows me to know what they bring to the table. Like I've never collaborated with Baron before then, you know, uh, before that Sweet Home album. But I, I watched his videos and kind of know what he sounds like and what he brings to the table. Definitely knew what Russ <laughs> like sounded like and what he brought to the table. So it, it's cool. It's super fun because you can kind of see a bunch of different energies like coming together and... Um, and seeing the final product is always cool. Like, and I'm always excited because, uh, yeah, we make magic happen. Like Aaron and I collaborate all the time. Like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put something out there. Aaron puts his twist on it. It's cool. I think. Yeah, it. yeah and I think the <laughs> the best ones are where you almost have like the idea, and you have mm-hmm. like a certain person in mind for like, mm-hmm. oh, they would fit that like, because yeah. like with the Silk Sonic thing, right? You're saying like. We were talking about it. We we're just like, yeah. who could we even get to sing that song? And you were like, you know who would do a great job? Yeah. It's Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Butler. Aaron Butler. And like, even when you called him, right? And he was like, oh, I'm down. Yeah. Just his enthusiasm <laughs> for like, I want to I wanna get these props and I want to do this thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. So it just, it kind of makes it building. That's when you're like, yeah, this will be like a really fun thing to work on with yeah. this person. It was cool. Like nobody told me to grow the mustache <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> I, just I just did it. Did that on my own, you know, like because I thought it would look cool in the video. Like if we're kind of, you know, like paying homage to the original video or like when um when we did space suits, like nobody told me to like put a, you know, put a cardboard box over my head and walk <laughs> around the mall. That was that's all this guy <laughs> you just did it i just did it you're, you're self-imposed no yeah <laughs> but you know if uh if if aaron tells you to go like sit down by like by the salvation army in lihui and look homeless for uh you know for the <laughs> yeah no, was that the man, man who, can't, who move, can't be moved man who can't be moved video like you just you do it you, you just trust <laughs> you trust aaron nakamura <laughs> wholeheartedly uh, and i did and look it came out great you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> what are some stuff that like in fact like uh aiden james yeah that he always like he goes, always yeah. says like that was the that was the <laughs> video that inspired him to do you know like his yeah. style of music it's like a man who can't be moved so it's just like it's okay like, cool i'll yeah. just camp out here i guess like <laughs> and you know like Kauai is a small place like people knew who i was people were so recognizing like, us yeah. as we were filming <laughs> 
And and the thing too is like there were a couple shots where I was across the street. Yes. It was so, just me by myself. So you were just by yourself. There was no camera around and I was filming across from across the street. But since we do like um like lip syncs, you know, stuff yeah, for yeah, the yeah. videos, it's like me looking <laughs> very like <laughs> weathered <laughs> like yeah, yeah. sitting down no, sitting down on the uh, on the ground with like my little speaker thing singing and, like singing along, along to myself to yourself <laughs> <laughs> so there's a level of no shame that's happening you know what i mean like um yeah or like if uh, if aaron tells you to you know to dance um <laughs> to dance the electric slide like right outside someone's house you you do it yeah, yeah. in the middle of a road in the middle of a road <laughs> where we had to move whenever our car came by <laughs> there's been some awesome awesome moments in our in our collaborations throughout the years it's uh, yeah. and you know, like no one told like Lenny to uh, to to do a hula hoop like while, <laughs> yeah. while he dances and plays bass, but you know he did it because he's yeah. an awesome dude, and we're gonna use it. <laughs> we're gonna use that. That's yeah. the kind of energy he brought. It was awesome. But yeah, for like for that, um, mm-hmm. I have sent in the past. I've sent uh, like screen grabs of mm-hmm. possible cropping, like so so mm-hmm. you know for the video. Yeah, like for for electric slide i sent them um some i yeah just some screenshots of possible cropping of like how mm. i want them to set the camera yeah. up He's so a DP. Like, <laughs> yeah so like if, if you want if you in your mind you know that you're gonna mm. uh film like i I'm, i was gonna film aldrin like you know the him dancing w- was full Shoes. full body yeah. and then like the feet. <laughs> and then i also wanted like a like a waist up mm-hmm. and then a close close of your your face mm-hmm. so i i sent them um some of those like screen grabs mm-hmm. just so that they knew like what we were filming yeah. on our end and they could film something mm-hmm. similar or you know I think, that complimentary on yeah, their end yeah, yeah. yeah so it looks so, cohesive yeah so yeah. cynthia did hers that was like a the the full yeah full body then waist up mm-hmm. and then lenny did his full body and then nope. he did a c- closer one too like, so yeah I, I think uh like you said right like having the vision is important mm-hmm. of like what the end is gonna supposed to look like mm-hmm. yeah so even like it's easy for us right because we just look at the video that is based off of or for some of them and then try to recreate it Mm -hmm. but even if you're like trying to make something new maybe look at other things that you've seen before you heard before and be like i kind of want it to sound like this right because even like if you're doing like a song you're collaborating with somebody on an original song i think that that's pretty common where you tell somebody like oh you know what song i really like i like this song can you make the groove kind of sound like this you know can you make the drums kind of sound like that yeah. give them a better idea of like oh, okay yeah i know that song i can do that or yeah i can i i at least know what you're you're going for what your end goal is trying to be mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah so in the end it's it's fun just like just try it out and you know like the more you do it the better you'll get um just like with you know with playing ukulele but so the more you collaborate with people the more ideas will come out and the more like oh man okay next time i do this i'm gonna do this instead it's uh it's cool it's definitely yeah. gonna be more and more polished as you do it because we've been doing it for like 12 13 years so <laughs> yeah it's been a long time yeah. we kind of know our way around the block on this uh <laughs> on this collaborating thing and it's it's always fun every time every time we collaborate <laughs> with, with with somebody it's it's always good oh yeah one more easter egg for the electric slide video like i called up aldrin and told him to meet me by the pizza hut in lihui <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> it's electric <laughs> yeah so that that part because because the the original electric slide music video starts off with a guy in his car and like sparks it's electric so yeah. like the sparks come out of his steering wheel and i wanted to recreate that and i think i spent more time on that like two, <laughs> two seconds because i had to animate all of the graphics mm, the mm. the sparks coming out and so like i i spent more time doing that than i'd spent editing the rest of the video i think yeah i remember like i had to um i had to tell heather my wife that's like oh i gotta film something with aaron and it's like oh i thought you guys filmed already like i thought you guys filmed that lesson it's like no he just wants to get this one part real quick and uh, he just wants to do it right by pizza hut yeah <laughs> and it's like okay cool how long have you gone i'm like 
I don't know, like 15 minutes maybe. Uh, <laughs> so I come back like yeah, 10, 15 minutes later. And she's like, you guys are done? What'd you film? I was like, just this. So I, I showed her the video, uh, that part. And she's like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, we we try to like add things from like the original, you know, like we yeah. try to keep things uh, fun. <laughs> but this goes back to before Ukulele Underground even mm. started. Yeah, because the very first Ukulele Underground video mm. was for Love Song by The Cure. Ooh, yes, and so <laughs> so before, yeah, just no shame. <laughs> yeah, so before any of this started with Ukulele Underground, we were filming for I'm Hawaii. And I had the idea of mm. doing sort of like, you mm. know, the, the entire song, yeah. like film videos for the entire song like, and put, put it out there. Mm -hmm. And so we spent like a whole day, right? Yeah. Like filming. Took the bus. Like we filmed it at my, uh, my apartment. We filmed at like the playground. And, yeah. 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 So we, fil we spent the whole day filming. I spent like a good week a week or two mm -hmm. just like just editing that yeah and then i am hawaii told us that they were gonna discontinue their video <laughs> section so like no longer do ukulele like tutorials mm -hmm. and stuff and that was sort of the reason why we started ukulele on the yeah. ground it was because we already had that video mm -hmm. in the bank yeah we had the lesson done we had that play along yeah. video ish done yeah and no one was ever gonna see it and so that was <laughs> that was, was a shame that was a shame. sort of yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, sort of the impetus for us to make our mm. own website is like somebody's somebody's gonna <laughs> gotta see this because we we spent so much time doing it so yeah, yeah. Was, so if you look back at the our very first like play, music, uh, video, music video yeah it wasn't even a play along yet it wasn't a play along it was just the song you playing mm. the song but Aldrin did all kinds of stuff and he just trusted me. <laughs> yeah, I've always, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Like, if you guys have ever, if you guys ever get the awesome chance of meeting Aaron, he's just a very trustworthy guy. Like, he doesn't seem like a guy who would, you know, like, would do you wrong. <laughs> it's like, I wholeheartedly trust Aaron. <laughs> uh, hey, Aldrin, we're going to go on this bus and you're going to flirt with your own ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right. Try to... <laughs> And we pulled it off. So, yeah, like yeah. no shame. And you know, he found, I guess he found someone to collaborate with that has no shame. Like, I just <laughs> have had no shame since day one. Like, and I mean, there's some shame, you know, like I'm, I am from the Philippines after all, a very conservative country, you know, conservative <laughs> religious country. And uh, there were some, you know, some moments where I'm a little hesitant, but after like, after I loosen up a little bit, it's like, oh yeah, I'll do whatever, <laughs> like, do whatever you want. So like the walking around the mall with the uh, with the box felt a little comfortable at first, but <clears throat> after a while, it's like, nah, whatever, I'm just, just gonna own it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with Mad can't be moved because it's just it's not gonna look right. Like if the the camera can see my you know my uh, my sh my shame, I guess uh, like, yeah, if yeah. I'm a little bit shame, it's gonna show. But uh, yeah, we just commit, so much. commit to the commit. character. Yeah, commit. You gotta, you gotta commit to it. I've always wanted to, uh, like, not act, but then I've always wanted to be like part of a comedy thing. You know, like, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> like SNL almost, like, like that. Yeah. I've always treated it kind of like that, where like it's not serious, uh -huh. but it's like it's hilarious. I'm, I'm a huge fan of SNL, so that's that's kind of my my thing. <laughs> yeah, I I think uh, uh, another tip we can give people too is like if you're collaborating in person. Uh, try to you know be prepared as prepared as possible mm -hmm. so the person you're collaborating with can just like get in and mm -hmm. do their part and then get out like uh yeah we we try to like limit it it there's like a saying like hurry up and wait wait right <laughs> like where you tell the person like oh be here at five o'clock sharp that's mm -hmm. when we're gonna start like filming right mm -hmm. and then if you you get there at the same time and you tell them okay wait but we gotta set up everything to, before, yeah. before yeah. we do it. So yeah, that's better, what we better to mm -hmm. be early and yeah. set up everything. Yeah, like like uh the Kauluvehi, uh Kauluvehi, yeah. or like uh what is that? Um, the one we shot down at the beach at night. Ooh, like, oh um, yeah. Tonight you tonight, belong to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Cause like uh, me my and, wife. <laughs> yeah, me and Aaron went down there early, right, to set kind of set up the thing even before it was dark uh -huh. just to get everything like in place and everything right that so. had so many moving parts it yeah. was yeah 
But if you guys saw like what it looked like, <laughs> like behind the scenes, it was kind of amazing. Like how you guys pulled that off. <laughs> like you guys brought like a generator and stuff. Yeah. Like, it was insane. That was a high. That was the highest production <laughs> that we've ever had. Generator. <laughs> yeah. And even like a. Uh the like for the fire right it was just like a little grill that you brought that so we could have like a little bit of fire yeah right? yeah so. and it died halfway through the shot so <laughs> so some of the flames in the video are just like fake flames <laughs> that i did in post-production nice but it looked great looked yeah great. and uh, but some of them are real because we did have a fire yeah there. We did. yeah we did. yeah yeah it's fun and then like because I was speaking of moving parts, we had to. You guys filmed it kind of moving too. It wasn't just like a a static shot, you know. Like it, yeah, it was a, it was a moving shot. Like we had to walk from like the beach and sit down and yeah, then yeah. like get that. You we know, were trying to track. recreate the scene from yeah. the jerk, so. <laughs> basically. Yeah, <laughs> but it was cool. And then um, I don't know. Uh, why didn't you come out with your with your uh, trumpet and did the trumpet part, Kai? Like that, <laughs> I think that would have been the icing in the cake. Like, you know, like where she does the, the cornet part and uh -huh. stuff. But instead of like, you know, of, of Heather doing it, like just Kai just comes out of nowhere and sits next to us. <laughs> like yeah. in between us and yeah. starts playing his, uh, his, his trumpet just unannounced. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, like maybe now I can do that. But I, I think at the time I didn't have a, a working trumpet. <laughs> I, I, had, I had a broken trumpet. So ask, yeah. ask, uh, ask Mike. Ask Magic Mike. Oh yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike always have. has some kind of weird instrument somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he does have a trumpet. So. <laughs> like Bernadette <laughs> Peters, he just brings it out. Yeah, out like, of what the heck? <laughs> he's uh, he, he's he's the music guy. He is all kinds of random stuff. Anyway, um. Yeah, those are our advice because we spent a good amount of time. That's see, thank you so much for the question because we we rarely get to kind of talk about like the behind the scenes stuff, and it's it's always fun because we want to show you folks like how much we love what we do, like because we do we we love making these videos for you folks, and even if like no one watched it, I think it would still be super <laughs> yeah. fun to do things, you know, yeah. like and. Um, yeah, and that's why, like, I, you know, lately I've been making videos, putting, like, you know, putting mustaches on my face and, like, <laughs> face tattoos and stuff. Yeah. It's just, like, I don't care who watches this, but I, you know, like, all I care about is, like, maybe the three people who I want to see that video. <laughs> Which <laughs> yes, is like, the guy who I'm, you know, like, who I'm doing, the guy drumming that, <laughs> that, I'm, uh, that I'm copying, and maybe, you know, one other person. <laughs> That's it. Maybe Mark McGrath. <laughs> <laughs> Which, he did well yeah he did he did and uh yeah it was, it was really cool he thought it was multiple people which means it worked because <laughs> he thought you know he said good job brothers <laughs> oh, <yeah>. plural yes <laughs> the, the, i saw i saw a comment on like yeah. a youtube video where it was like this is criminally i, for, I wish i could remember mm. which one of our play alongs it was but it's like this is criminal it's criminal how many people don't know how, <laughs> like, how uh, true to the original you guys stayed, <laughs> right? Like, how much you yeah. copied it. But then the <laughs> other one that's funny is, like, uh, the um, brown eyed girl. Yeah. People go, like, wait, so is this two people or is this one person? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it twins? Is that in Ventura Highway. Yeah. I, yeah. I see a lot yeah. of, I see yeah. a lot of those comments and stuff. Ah, see, all of those, like, have have their own stories like attached to it like the brown eyed girl with the bird and like the uh yeah. the um ventura highway with like you know like okay okay you're gonna wear this shirt now you're gonna wear that shirt that's like <laughs> yeah. the old couch from our old office ah oh, man good stuff every single one of those you know one of those videos especially the collaboration videos has their own story like attached to it and it, i i hope we can tell one day <laughs> like, <all> the, you <laughs> know yeah. Maybe we'll start with this podcast. Lots we'll of just, fun. Yeah, lots of fun. We we love what we do and thank you guys so much for allowing us to do what we love. And this, we'll, we'll we'll keep doing it. Keep doing more of that stuff. Yeah? All right, Kahai. Um I promised last week that we were going to try this awesome hot sauce that was sent over to us by uh, Rob sent us to us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, by Rob. This is a carrot habanero pepper sauce. Habanero. It's a lot. It's it's a um it's a lot milder than uh, than what people have been sending us lately. So I'm actually super excited for this because I can enjoy the flavor. And um, instead of uh, <clears throat> of of going to a, a big oh, chain company and a big fast food chain company, I went with a more local business and got Konohiki Seafoods. 
which is funny because this is fried chicken yeah. from <laughs> Konohiki Seafoods. If you guys are ever on Kauai, try out their um, try out their seafoods and their chicken. Their chicken oh. is based off of Hanama uh, Hanama Ulu Cafe. Mm -hmm. Their chicken, and because Hanama Ulu Cafe closed down. Um, Konohiki bought the recipe and they started to kind of sell it at their yeah. store. So this is the and uh, their shrimp too. Yeah, and the yeah. shrimp. Yes, and the shrimp. Um, so really awesome stuff. I can't wait. So we're gonna try out this hot sauce with this. And also, um, I made my own sauce that I wanted the guys to try. So I don't know who wants to grab their sauce, but here's mm. some chicken. You guys try that sauce, and I will try this sauce. You guys can also try this sauce too. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I. Oh, do you need a plate? <clears throat> Um, yes, please. So, I've been more and more in touch with my uh, with my cultural, like Filipino culture side, and um, in Filipino culture, really no meal is complete without rice and without some kind of vinegar dipping sauce. And um, I made it a point to uh, thank you to experiment with some flavors and come up with my own vinegar chili vinegar dipping sauce so we're we're gonna be gonna be testing that out so i'm gonna take a piece of chicken so this is konohiki seafoods always support local everyone yeah <laughs> they're if, they're awesome if you know like uh Kahai? the uh yeah oh, yeah. I'll come. well like mm -hmm. uh you can just leave it somewhere okay. i'll come grab it later. okay okay yeah. But like, uh, if you know Kauai, Hanamalu Cafe was like kind of known for their mm -hmm. their chicken and mm -hmm. their their uh, shrimp yeah. and their food. Mm -hmm. So like, their chicken is like one of the ones that is like considered like, oh, this is the chicken that you get. And then there's also Pono Market chicken too, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, and both of them are great in different ways. Mm -hmm. they, Maybe so next time we'll do Pono Market. You know, I do want to promote some of the local businesses because I, I know some of you folks travel like here to Kauai. So instead of, you know, doing the uh, the normal, like, fast food chain that, like, people, sh you know, people already kind of know, let's, uh, let's do more of this stuff where, like, where we kind of highlight a, uh, a local business. So this, okay. this podcast, Breaking Grounds, guys, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for about, ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, while you're opening yes. that. Uh, Ask me we questions. Had, well, we had a question from Chris and Sue, but yes. I think awesome. that we might run out of time. Uh, I don't know. It's okay. So maybe we can. We don't got, what are you doing after this? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I, special super duper long episode. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, and, but as we, you <laughs> try the hot sauce, yeah, you can like, answer the question. Yeah. What's hot? What, what show is that? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Chris and Sue, they asked, um, mm -hmm. or they said that Aldrin had suggested to Sue that she pick using her thumb on the G and C string. Yes. Uh, her index on the E string and her middle on the A string. Yes. This has improved the stability of her hand position. Awesome. Chris, on the other hand, feels very comfortable using four fingers with mm -hmm. his ring finger on the A string. Okay. Uh, dedicating one finger for each string feels more stable than having his thumb jumping back and forth between the two strings. Mm -hmm. We would love to hear the pros and cons of both, I'm guessing. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> good. Good. Oh yeah. Mm hmm Is it is it not uh hot? I mean it's probably not. <laughs> not <laughs> well, Aldrin is not the best person <laughs> no, to no, answer that gauge. question. <laughs> <clears throat> His gauge is yeah a mm. little skewed. That's really good. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I taste carrot, but there's something sweet about it, which is probably the carrot. But yeah. It's awesome here. Try. Yeah, I, I tried to uh, oh, find the like website for that hot sauce, but mm -hmm. I think it's like a. Wait, I'm gonna pour some Is it like a taco place. place or something? And I don't know if they they even sell the hot sauce online. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pros and cons: using three fingers versus using four fingers. Now, using three fingers, and the reason why. Um, I, I suggest to people, especially people who use like high, high G, is that if you're using high G, your thumb is going to be the most reliable, the best tone, and the most control that you're going to get out of the, uh, you know, the, the fingers on your hands. So if you, uh, if you put all four fingers on all four strings, your thumb is only really delegated to just the top string, which in this case, if, um, unless you're doing a lot of banjoey techniques, the G doesn't really, you know, like, uh, get used that often, okay? So, you know, uh, to, to kind of, not waste, but to, um, to use this thumb only on, uh, on a string that, that you can, that you barely use. It, it's all, you know, it, 
it's not ideal, right? Like, so I use the thumb for the G and the C in this case. There it is, song. that was killing me. Um, so by using the thumb on the C and the G string, it's um, it, it's ideal because I feel like it, it gives it two jobs and um, and me coming from a guitar background usually I use my thumb for bass you know for the for the upper strings uh, for the bass strings so kind of getting this thumb on that low C is um is ideal and then kind of G to to use uh, banjo like techniques and stuff but really those you know those two. Uh, now, pointer finger on the E, middle finger on the A. I use my pointer finger a lot, you know, like in my everyday life. Using that for the E um, and the A for middle finger, I use these two fingers a lot in, in you know, in, in real life. Oh well, no, outside of ukulele, not real life, but outside of ukulele. I use these two fingers, you know, a lot, like when I type, you know, when I play video games, whatever it may be. Um, so, I don't know when the last time I did anything with my, you know, with my ring finger that was as important um, that uh, was as important as when I use my pointer and my middle, okay? So, delegating the most important st string because most of the, uh, the melody lines are gonna come from the A string. So if you use the weakest finger on such an important string, it's not ideal. You can, I mean, there's people who do it, you know, and it's been done and stuff, but for the most part, for me, um, I have more control over my middle and my pointer. So the, the middle and pointer is kind of interchangeable. The pointer finger doesn't just have to be on the E string. It can also be on the A string. Middle finger, same thing. It doesn't just have to be on the A string. It can be on the E string. So these two are kind of interchangeable. Whereas the thumb uh, can play the bass and can play the top, you know, top high G string or um, if, if you have a low G, the low G, okay? So it's mainly because I don't like using my ring finger for such an important string. That's like my main, um, you know, con about like using four fingers like this. Pros, I mean, you know, you can, I guess you can, um, like like Chris said, for him, he has a little bit more control, but I, I find like I have some control with, you know, with, with the three. But pros are, you can hit all four strings at the same yeah. time, which you can't do if uh, if you only use three, uh, three fingers. But mainly that's it, because, um. The ukulele is a melodic instrument and it's a treble instrument, yeah? So because it's a treble instrument, the highest, you know, the highest treble string that you have is the A. You don't want to use a, uh, a weak finger like your ring finger to such an important string. In, yeah? the, in the chat, uh, Chris and Sue said that Chris mostly plays low G too. Yeah. So that's probably why yeah. you probably prefer that. Mm -hmm. But again, like kind of, uh, it's one of those things, right, where you don't have to rule out either technique right mm -hmm. and there are probably times where it's like oh uh, even if you play high g i'm gonna use my four fingers to do just this like one you know for this one little accent part i want right. to like pluck all the strings or something mm -hmm. so even uh for sue who said like oh i uh, using three fingers feels pretty stable for her mm -hmm. like uh yeah you kind of try and be flexible you know mm -hmm. like Try even though you like prefer one over the other, mm. still try to go back to them, you know, or mm. like at least keep it in your pocket for when the time comes that is like, oh, that works better in this situation. Mm. Yeah, and if you're not doing, if you're if you're doing like non melodic finger picking, where it's mm. just random strings or like a, a finger picking pattern, mm -hmm. just to fill out the background. Then yeah. the A string is not Doesn't really, yeah. yeah, is not that critical. Yeah. So you can use the four fingers for that. Yeah. So it's you know it really is um, your preference, like whatever you prefer to use. But those are the reasons why I usually tell people to do it that way. Like you don't want to, especially if you're a high G user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yeah. you uh, do you have do you have the the vinegar? I want to show people the vinegar that I made. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it I, visually I, looks good. I actually. tried it. It's like it's amazing. I, you should just dip a whole chicken, <laughs> whole chicken inside. Yeah. <laughs> Did you try the um, the carrot one? Yeah, carrot one's good. It's got like a sweetness to it. I, I dig it. So this is the yeah, um, that was actually hotter than your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is not does not spicy at all, but it does. So this is the uh, the the chili vinegar that I you know that I made and I made it that way so you can um, you can take more peppers and add it in there if you want it more <laughs> spicy but it's always this is always the baseline yeah, yeah. but um 
you know, this is, a, this is what I made. It's got onions, it got green onions, it got red onions, it got ginger, garlic, uh, Hawaiian chili pepper, salt, pepper, shoyu, and vinegar. Very, very simple, very effective. Like, this is yeah, it's great. This is what I grew up with. Like this is a, the kind of recipe my dad would make, and I'm like, I need, I need to learn how to make my dad's sauce, and this is as close as I'm gonna get to it. That, that has onions in it, right? Too, and yes. you said like you can pull out the onions, and it's kind of like yeah. Uh, so yeah, onions. pickled onions. So what it, you know, that's another thing you can do. It's like um, I I put just a little bit, like just the long slivers of onion in there, so you can use it as a pickled onion. And if uh, if you want more, you can always cut more onions and. Just pickle it inside and leave it for a few hours and you got pickled onions. But since we've been talking about hot sauces on this show, I figured I might as well, you know, like throw my hat in the ring. <laughs> or it's like, it's not for hot, but it's for, it's for flavor. flavor. You can make it as hot as you want, you know, later on. But what's most important is that flavor. Because we talk about in this show, we're like, you know, man, that's like, that tastes good. Like, like this, that, that carrot, you know, hot sauce that, uh, that Rob just gave us, it tastes good. It's like one of the best tasting mm -hmm. ones that we've gotten so far. Because mm -hmm. um, it's that sweet and hot thing going on and it's, I, I dig it. But yeah, question, another question, Kai, give me another one. Uh, I, we don't have, I don't think we have another question. Okay, sounds good. Um, well, maybe we can just kind of end it here. Then let's we'll start eating some chicken, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so if you guys want to, uh, if you guys are interested, I can uh, I can kind of give Kahai the the recipe to uh, to make the hot sauce that or the the um the the spicy vinegar that that I made, and you guys can make it at home because it really is super duper um, simple to uh, to make. Okay, I'll uh, I'll write it out. I'll write the recipe to Kahai, try it out for yourself. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. With oh. Ingredients that anybody can find anywhere. Uh, like, yeah. And we also, mm -hmm. for our own uh, site, we started using Discord, right? Mm -hmm. And like Rob asked, like, oh, why, why are you guys using Discord? Uh, and there's a whole host of reasons. But an another thing is that it's like, it's a persistent chat. So it mm -hmm. means that the chat will, you know, whatever you write, it's going to stay there for mm -hmm. people to read. Mm -hmm. So if you guys make this hot sauce, feel yeah. free to post it there or like even post like links to other stuff. Or mm -hmm. if you do the song challenge, you guys mm -hmm. can post it there too and everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So good, good stuff. I'll, uh, I'll teach you guys how to make it. I would love to, you know, I would love to see how, uh, how you guys do. And uh, I want this, I want this to spread because this is from my culture. This is like a Filipino thing and uh, I'm, I'm kind of stoked. Just sharing it with everybody, okay? Um, so tomorrow we have uh, Aloha Friday Live Jam. Uh, what else? Kahai, uh, how's that? How's that solo coming along? It, it came out today. Oh, already. awesome! So if you guys, uh, if you guys want to learn uh, beautiful Kauai, make sure you guys check out Ukulele Underground's. Uh, uh, U plus solos. So U plus solos. We have beautiful Kauai. It's. I mean, speaking of pride, I'm proud of my own. You know, on this on this island, and we wanted to share that with you folks. Um, really, really, really melodic tune, and I'm sure people, you know, people who have at least visited Kauai or visited Hawaii in general should be familiar with the song. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, let us know if you guys have any questions. We'll see you folks tomorrow for a Low Friday Live Jam. Take care. Have a great one. Aloha.